President Uhuru Kenyatta, President-elect William Ruto, and Azimiola Umoja presidential candidate Raila Odinga have separately met a delegation of U.S. lawmakers who are in the country for U.S.-Kenya strategic cooperation talks. The meetings highlighted the trio's busy schedule as President Kenyatta prepares for his exit from power at a time President-elect William Ruto has been working on a power strategy should he be sworn in in the coming weeks. Sam Gituku reports. At State House Nairobi, the delegation led by U.S. Senator Chris Coons commended the president for the peace experienced during the country's general election that was concluded earlier this week. It was the first time President Kenyatta was seen in public since his deputy of nine years was declared president-elect in a contest that had Kenyatta backing Raila Odinga of the Azimiola Umoja, one Kenya coalition party. In a statement released by State House, President Kenyatta told the U.S. delegation that his greatest desire is that peace will prevail and that the country may set an example on the continent and the world. From State House, the delegation headed to Karen for a meeting with President-elect William Ruto that was also attended by a section of Kenya Kwanzaa leaders. A tweet from the U.S. Embassy in Kenya indicates the two parties spoke about promotion of peace and security in the region and ways of strengthening the economies of the two countries. In a separate tweet, Ruto indicated that the talks touched on the just-concluded elections in the country and the areas of cooperation between Kenya and United States. Ruto stated, quote, we commit to deepen relations and further partnership for the mutual benefit of the citizens of the two countries, end of quote. The U.S. congressional delegation then headed for yet another meeting with the Zimiola Umoja presidential candidate Raila Odinga and his running mate Martha Karua. In a Facebook post, Odinga stated that they held candid discussions on developments around the general election and bilateral relations with the congressional delegation of the U.S. Senate and House of Representatives that they reiterated their commitment to pursuing legal means to resolve issues around the presidential election results. <laughs> and as the U.S. delegation held talks with the three leaders, the president-elect continued with his meetings, focused at consolidating power for the control of parliament. Since being declared president-elect on Monday, Ruto has been meeting with newly elected leaders from his party and coalition. He has also been wooing leaders from the rival Azimio One Kenya Coalition Party, ahead of picking parliamentary leadership in the coming days. By law, the Assumption of Office Committee that comprises top government bureaucrats led by Acting Secretary to the Cabinet, Joseph Kinyua, ought to brief and facilitate the briefing of Ruto on security status of the country and provide him with resources and personnel he may require as he prepares for office. It is not yet clear if Ruto and President Kenyatta have met or spoken since the former's election. I haven't uh, talked to Uhuru Kenyatta, uh, our outgoing president, but um, I am sure there will be a conversation because uh, now I am the president-elect and there has to be a transition. President Kenyatta continues with his presidential duties of coordinating the cabinet and the government until he hands over to the new president. There are seven days allowed for any person dissatisfied with the presidential election outcome to file a petition at the Supreme Court. As it stands, the president cannot make any substantial changes to his government, neither can he nominate or appoint judges of the superior courts. He cannot nominate or appoint any public or state officer Neither can he nominate, appoint or dismiss a cabinet secretary or any member of his administration. He has no power to hire or fire any ambassador or diplomat, neither exercise the power of mercy on any convict nor confer any national honors. Those powers can and will only be exercised by the next president whenever they assume office. And even though President-elect William Ruto and the deputy Rigadi Gashagwa may continue meeting like-minded allies, while reaching out to previous opponents, they cannot at the moment make any significant national decisions. By law, Ruto should nominate three representatives to the assumption of office of the President Committee for ease of coordination and preparations for the expected swearing-in. He will only exercise presidential powers once President Kenyatta hands over the instruments of power to him, the instruments being the presidential sword 
and the constitution. For now, he may continue with his strategy meetings, including preparing a list of cabinet nominees, which he can only execute once he ascends to the high office. For Odinga, he continues with the search for evidence as he prepares to file a petition against Ruto's win at the Supreme Court. The window to file closes on Monday next week. Sam Gitukus Resident TV, Nairobi.